So, good morning from uh, me as well. Um, my name is Paavo Beek, as uh, was told. Um, I'm a writer and director for um, a group called Kino Theater. Um, and so, we have moved today um, from um, uh, the examples uh, of uh, Brussels to uh, Nordic countries to Finland, uh, and uh, finally we get to uh, some of the examples uh, in Estonia, um, which I will try to describe from um, kind of an um, artistic viewpoint. So the previous speakers uh, uh, were, uh, I think, more in, uh, interested in uh, the theoretical implications of, uh, of how to achieve integration through, uh, popular, um, through means of popular culture. Um, I tried to look at it more from an um, artistic uh, perspective, so what it means to be involved in uh, a project such as uh, uh, the ones that I will uh, start to describe in, in a second. Um, so I guess I'm here today because I have um, participated in uh, two arts projects that uh, have tried to engage um, Russian-speaking actors in Estonia uh, into um, uh, the, the field of arts or theatre or TV uh, in Estonia. Um, and uh, before I uh, describe these projects, I, um, just a few words uh, about the background. Um, that's maybe interesting that what was our starting point, why we wanted to do this, uh, these projects. Um, so about one fourth of uh, Estonia's population is uh, originally uh, Russian speaking. About two thirds are Estonian speaking. So it's um, uh, a fairly large uh, cultural minority we have here in Estonia. Uh, the, uh, people whose mother tongue is, is Russian. Um, and so what we asked ourselves is that how come living in Tallinn for most of our lives, uh, being uh, you know, around 30 years of age, uh, part of the so-called urban youth that uh, Marco was describing, trying to cross borders, how come we have no um, Russian-speaking friends? Um, and we tried to uh, answer this question uh, together with a colleague of mine uh, an actress uh, and director called uh, and woman of the year 2017, uh, Marilis Lil, uh, by um, taking uh, four Russian actors from uh, Russian theater and making them learn Estonian for two years and doing the same uh, with four actors uh, from an Estonian theater, Tallinn City Theater, and uh, making them do the same, so learn Russian for two years. And um, this project was called um, At Second Sight, or Teise Silma Vilgust, so uh, in reference to the fact that uh, not always uh, love happens at first sight, sometimes you need the, a second sight. Um, uh, and during those two years of learning languages, uh, the same applied to the directors of this uh, piece, so I actually have been learning Russian for uh, three years now, uh, have continued it, and I hope at least some of the uh, people involved in this project have done the same. Um, and so during these, these two years, uh, we also met up with um, pretty much uh, everyone we could uh, find uh, in Estonia who had strong views uh, upon the process of integration. So we met with uh, journalists, politicians, uh, sociologists, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, and so on. And we used this information to put together a performance which featured uh, sketches about this uh, situation we have in Estonia, um, uh, and we played them uh, in two languages at the same time, so Russian and Estonian, uh, without any subtitles. So the idea was to, to, to be understandable to both uh, Russian and Estonian audiences. Um, and the project also had a twist, so it took place in two theatres, the Russian theatre and the, the Tallinn City theatre, but uh, instead of playing the performance there, we had the Russian actors um, take the um, uh, people sitting in the Estonian theater, uh, introducing themselves in, in Estonian that they had learned, and taking them on a bus, uh, so on a journey uh, to Lasnamae, which is the area in Tallinn where most of the regular integration happens. So it's the, the area where I think most Estonians and Russians live side by side. Uh, and the same happened. Uh, uh, with the other group, so uh, the Estonian actors were in the Russian theater starting the performance, uh, saying, introducing themselves uh, uh, in Russian that they had learned, uh, and uh, asking the audience to come on a journey with them. And so uh, on these buses, these um, uh, actors, um, you can say, see Dimitri there with the uh, red uh, 
jacket, uh, they uh, describe their personal uh, problems of why they haven't been able to uh, gap, uh, bridge the gap, uh, why, why they haven't uh, uh, made any Estonian or Russian friends. Uh, and they did it in, not in their own language, but uh, in the language that they had learned. Um, and so the buses uh, arrived at Lasnamä, and um, I will show you a brief clip uh, uh, just to see what happened uh, in this place. <coughs> So the idea was uh, basically to get uh, the Russian audience and the Estonian audience sit in the same uh, hall and uh, get them to laugh at uh, the same things and, uh, and relate to uh, the same uh, things that they saw on stage. Um, and the performance was, uh, I, I would say, a mixed uh, success. So I, we had very good feedback from the, the Russian community and uh, also good um, mm, uh, critical attention from the, the Russian uh, uh, arts critics. But uh, I think from the Estonian, Estonian side, it was more like a mixed feeling because for a lot of the um, Estonian viewers, I think the, these topics were not new. So they had already been covered in, uh, in previous um, uh, performances about uh, dealing with the Russian-Estonian relations and, and how difficult it is to get those two communities to mix together. So, um, and I think the three main lessons that we learned from this quite long uh, project uh, uh, involving ourselves with uh, uh, this bilingual uh, way of, of uh, uh, directing and, and writing, um, I would say that the, the most important lesson was that uh, if you want to uh, do an arts project to promote the integration, you don't necessarily have to make this play about uh, integration. It was something also referring back to what one of the speakers uh, said before, that I think in a way it's... Um, it would, would have been more efficient 
uh, to actually use uh, like a maybe a traditional play, maybe not Romeo and Juliet, it's maybe too much of a cliche, but, but something like um, a more traditional play to get those actors uh, work together. Because uh, I think the undercurrent of, of having um, actors from different nationalities work together would have been there anyway. So we didn't necessarily have to make it about this, um, uh, this topic of integration. And why am I saying it is because I think for the Russian actors involved, it would have been much more interesting to actually work with um, Estonian actors in, in a way and on a topic that wasn't about their identity, that uh, wasn't about kind of uh, how does it feel to be a Russian, how difficult it is uh, to be a Russian speaker in Estonia because this is something that they get all the time. So um, uh, whenever there is a, you know, like a question from the media about this project, they will have to talk about, instead of their work, they have to talk about their identity. And this is actually, I think, becomes an obstacle to integration because the, um, uh, you get these kind of, uh, in Estonian society, we have this, I would say, these token Russians, like, uh, you know, whenever there is a, uh, a question about, uh, about Russian matters or issues, you get the same people that are asked these questions about, so what do you think? And I, I think that uh, we didn't know it before, but we kind of helped to create these kind of token, token Russians that people look up to when, when they want to know something about the Russian situation uh, by doing this project in a way that we uh, focused it on this problem of, uh, of integration. So I would say this was like the biggest um, uh, lesson that we learned uh, from the artistic uh, viewpoint. Um, and I think that it's, it's important also um, for the future uh, of Estonian theatre, for example, um, it is so important to engage these Russian-speaking actors in regular performances. This has happened also in the past few years, but uh, not a lot. So it's kind of an ongoing process and the kind of ongoing responsibility of the artistic community to do this, uh, to have uh, people speaking in Russian accent on Estonian stages because they are also part of our community. Um, the second uh, lesson was that um, what worked best actually uh, within this performance uh, was um, what happened on the, the buses. So these kind of moments where uh, people were, uh, um, actors were uh, telling their stories, personal stories uh, in a different language. So I think why, why this happened, why this became so uh, significant was that uh, I think this is seen as a kind of a first step. So if you want to do an arts project about uh, uh, the matters of bringing together communities, you have to kind of make the first step and, and uh, uh, a good way to do this is to, uh, uh, to, to learn at least some of the language of the other group and, and try to engage uh, in that language because the actor at least, what we saw is, uh, he or she becomes more vulnerable by doing uh, this, and uh, the audience will kind of warm up to the, the story more because it's uh, perceived as an effort to, to actually um, uh, to make a contact with them. So this, these kind of personal stories in foreign languages worked uh, really well in this performance, and, and uh, it was um, also, um, I think, it, it kind of made sense to me because I often feel that in the Estonian society, um, also, one of the sketches portrayed this, that, that um, the Russian speakers are here afraid to speak Estonian because uh, the Estonians will keep correcting their mistakes. So you have this kind of figure of this language inspector who is always kind of looking out for this kind of uh, you know, wrong uh, case endings and all that. Um, and I think we have to change this. Uh, so it, ha it has to be more normal to, to be able to make mistakes in language, to, to speak in uh, you, you know, to, to not be afraid to speak Estonian if you're a Russian, and the other way around as well. So, and I think it is easier for me, at least, when I um, when I started learning Russian, and I tried to, uh, like, you know, maybe sometimes sitting in a taxi, I, I would try to make conversation in my new, newly learned Russian language, and uh, I often had this impression that um, uh, I would say the first few words. And, and uh, the taxi driver being uh, a Russian speaker, I think uh, he would often have this kind of feeling that, okay, you know, if this guy speaks uh, Russian so badly, you know, my Estonian is pretty good. <laughs> so uh, in, in many ways, this kind of helps, this kind of making the first step. Um, and the third the important lesson that we learned was that um, people really don't like the word integration uh, in Estonia. 
So um, we actually consciously tried to avoid this using this term integration. We instead talked about uh, bringing together communities, mixing them, uh, use all kinds of other ways to describe what we were doing. And I think it's because um, it is seen uh, by the Estonians, this integration business uh, is usually seen as something that comes from the government top down, usually results in these kind of expensive social campaigns that people see as you know, not really working. Um, and uh, sometimes even it is associated with um, you know, European Union directions that, okay, you have to do this integration thing because in Europe people think it's important. So it, it is, is usually seen as a kind of a governmental or European initiative from the top down. Um, and from the Russian side, um, they don't like the word integration because they associate it with um, assimilation. So whenever people talk about you know, integrating, uh, th th I think the Russian speakers always have this kind of sense that uh, uh, do, you know, you say integration, but you really mean is that you want all of us to learn Estonian, speak only in Estonian, forget our own uh, um, language, uh, close our schools, and so on. So from both sides, the, the word integration has a kind of a bad uh, reputation. Um, so maybe, you know, this is something to think about, that uh, I, I'm not saying that this conference is, uh, is doing anything wrong, but this is certainly an issue that, that for the regular person on the street uh, it is perceived as something, you know, people do high above that doesn't really concern us. And I think the, 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 the sociological implication is that, um, from my experience at least, um, projects that are started by regular folks, that are kind of grassroots movements, even if they're really small, like, you know, um, there is a guy who's organizing in Tallinn uh, these kind of um, uh, language um, Cafes, like you know, people come to a cafe and then they start uh, practicing the languages, like Rus Estonian, Russian, English, so on. It's a very small project, and there are similar uh, things happening in Estonia. And I think um, I would say that p uh, politically, it would, would be much more uh, wiser to uh, to kind of support and try to make these pr uh, projects a lot bigger, to kind of give the funding to to these things that have grown from uh, from the the grassroots rather than start um, uh, their own projects uh, the, from like the governmental projects because it, it just simply because of this kind of reputation thing that it's very hard to, to make convincing um, arts projects or, or even integration projects that come from the top down because the people just simply don't buy it. So uh, I think uh, to find these kind of um, initiatives that come from uh, uh, the bottom to, you know, like started by regular folks. I think this is like one, maybe one of the keys to to having successful projects that have an impact. Um, yeah, and so we try to, um, with the same group, pretty much we try to um, use these lessons that we learned um, and created a TV series uh, uh, this year, uh, which was called Our Estonias or, or May Estid. Um, so we use these personal stories uh, that I described, this kind of uh, telling um, uh, things in a, in a foreign language. Um, we used them in a, t in a TV series that was about, uh, about traveling. But instead of like a regular travel show uh, we, um, where you go to a foreign country and you uh, introduce the places that you see there, we did a travel show which um, was, uh, took place in Estonia. So you had uh, the Russian minority speakers, the Russian speakers, the minority, uh, actually introduce places that they uh, like best or love best in Estonia that are significant to them uh, and uh, um, had, had them introduced to the general public in a kind of um, humorous way. Um, and I, I would say that this because it, it, the project didn't uh, deal with integration directly, um, but instead used this kind of uh, traveling uh, style, uh, it had much, much more of an impact, and it, I think it's, it's much more, um, it was more, more successful with the viewers as well. So uh, to end, uh, I will just show you a clip from this uh, Our Estonias. It's one of the few places where uh, we actually used also the word integration. So. Ah, sorry. Ma tahtsin teie räägida, kuidas minust sai teisugune inimene. Aga ma ei mõtle praegu mingit naist. Tulge minuga kaasa.
Minu esimene kohtumine arvu Pärtiga. Ma tõtasin selle ajal raadios oma kursa Vennaga ja ta antis mulle plaad. Ütles, et see võib olla siinu teema, et mingi klaasikaline muusika ja... Ja mul oli tool ajal hästi palju tööd ja see lebas nadele aega mu kottis. Ühel hetkel meenus mulle see plaad, läksin makki juurde ja panin selle peale. Ja kui ma kuulsin esimese helisid, siis ma tardusin ja jäängi põrandale põlvitama ja ei julginud liiguta, kuni terve plaad oli ära kuladud. Lihtsalt olen niimoodi liikumatult ja kuulsin seda lõppuni. Mul oli väga sugav elamus selles, et ma pärast jooksin meie teatrisse ja ütlesin kõikile, kas te teete, kes on arvu päärt? Kas te teate, kes on arvu päärt? Mul oli see nagu sugav elamine, läbi elamine, väga, väga tugev. Ma tean, et minust sai teissugune inimene pärast seda, kui ma kuulsin arvu pärti. Võt see on integratsioon. Võt see on kultuuride vahilen dialoog. Aga kus me oleme praegu? Võt vaadake, see on arvu pärti keskus. Thank you.